everyone. Today's story is called Water's Way. It's written by Lisa Westberg Peters and illustrated by Ted Rand. And they're going to go over the water cycle for us. Water's Way. I see an umbrella and some galoshes or rain boots. Looks like it's been raining somewhere. Water's Way. Look, somebody wrote in the fog that was on their window. Water has a way of changing. It can rise from the sea or fall from the clouds. It can drift in a fog or lie still on a winter pond. Every day, water is changing all across the land and sea and sky and changing inside Tony's house too. Let's see how. It was early winter. Outside, a breeze blew into the hills and the smell of the sea filled the morning air. So it looks like Tony lives near the beach. Inside, Tony kept an eye on the sky and a hand on his brand new sled. He was hoping for snow. Behind him, steam rose from a pot on the stove and the smell of soup filled the room. So see, the steam is actually water vapor. Water from the soup in the pot heated up, okay, not by the sun, but by the heating element on the stove and turned, evaporated that water turning it into water vapor. When the moist breeze from the sea met the hills, it rose and cooled off and clouds formed in the sky, right? Now that's what, what happens in nature. When the sun heats up the water, the water vapor goes up and it all sticks together in the clouds. That's called condensation. When the steam rose from the soup pot hit the kitchen window, it covered the glass with a foggy curtain. All right, so that's the example inside of how the steam from the soup pot, remember it turned into water, that was water vapor, and then it condensed, that's condensation, onto the windows. Just like the clouds outside, you might get a little bit of foggy steam on the inside of a window if you're indoors. Outside, a few raindrops splashed on the ground. The air wasn't cold enough for snow. Soon houses and hillsides shimmered behind the sheets of rain. Now let, let's look in Tony's house. Inside, Tony wrote his name on the fogged window and peeked through. Drips streaked down the glass from each letter. See? So that is the water um, vapor starting to turn back into water droplets, just like the rain. Some of the rain collected into puddles, some of it soaked into the ground, and tree roots sucked it from the soil. Some of it seeped into the earth where it would creep through the rocks. A tiny puddle formed on Tony's windowsill. Tony poked at it. There'd be no sledding today. See, it's not cold enough to turn into snow. So it's just a puddle of water, inside and out. In the warmth of the afternoon sun, roofs dried out, puddles shrank, and evergreens lost their glisten. Okay, so the sun is shining down and it's heating up the water drops and they're evaporating back up into the sky. In the kitchen, the fog on the glass and the puddle on the windowsill disappeared. That's because the sunlight shone through, heated up those water drops and evaporated them into water vapor. By evening, a nearby creek grew wide and full from the day's rain. It surged downhill, down to the sea. After supper, Tony climbed the stairs for his bath. He turned on the tap full blast and a steamy torrent filled the tub. So as we can see, water has movement when it's in liquid form too. When the creek reached the sea, salty waves washed in and out, around and around until the creek blended into the sea. When Tony stepped in for his bath, he added a few drops of green soap. He sailed his boats in and out, around and around his bathtub ocean until the green streams faded and blurred. See, so you can see the movement of the water based on the colored soap that he put in. The wind stirred up the surf and a bit of the sea escaped into the sky. It was invisible, but the smell of the sea filled the air. Tony whipped up bubbles in his ocean and the smell of soap filled the room. 
Okay, so water also has a scent, okay, depending on what's around it. There outside by where Tony lives, there's the salty ocean water, so it smells like the salt in the sea. And in Tony's bathtub, it smells like the soap that he mixed in. As the breeze from the sea met cooler air over the land, tiny drops formed around specks of dust. Each drop was too small to see, but together they made clouds. As Tony headed for bed, he found another window clouded, this time from his bath. See, so all that water vapor condensed and that's called condensation. It turned into like, almost like a little cloud on his window. Okay, that steamy fog. That night the air turned cold, cold enough for the tiny drops in the clouds to freeze into ice crystals. They grew larger and heavier. All night, Tony dreamed of sledding. He stayed warm and cozy beneath a mound of blankets, but the fog on the bathroom window froze into a frosty curtain. By dawn, the clouds were thick with crystals. The larger ones, too heavy to float, began to fall. See the snow starting to fall? In the morning, Tony woke early. He quickly scratched a hole in the frost. Was it cold enough for snow? See, this time it didn't evaporate. It actually turned into ice crystals or frost on his window. Let's see. Houses and hillsides vanished beneath a wild flurry of snowflakes. The snow settled on the rooftops and the evergreens. It covered the new layer of ice on the puddles. A snowflake landed on Tony's face. He wished it would last forever, but it soon melted in his smile because... <gasps> How happy he looks. Water has a way of changing. Boy, it sure did, remember? from liquid to water vapor that floats up into the sky. Then it gets chilly up there, it condenses and falls back to the earth either as rain or snow. Sure does change, that's the water cycle. All right, so that was Water's Way. I hope you all enjoyed it.